2024, a new year for a new camera. And this is the updated, beefed up and facelifted OM System OM1 Mark II. It's Jimmy Chang here from Red35. Today, we're going to have a first look at OM Systems' updated flagship, the OM1 Mark II, and see what's new and my first impression on the camera and whether you should upgrade. Before we start, let me say the obvious first. I have been a MFT diehard since 2016 and currently an OM System ambassador. And if you've been following me long enough, you also know that I have reviewed almost all Olympus Micro Four Third cameras and lenses in the past. My opinions in this video, however, are personal, and I will be focusing on the technical abilities of this OM1 Mark II, and any references made to older Olympus and OM system cameras were to help you get a fair idea on the new camera compared to what you may already have. Finally, this is a preview of the OM1 Mark II. At the time of making this video, the camera is running pre-production firmware and all the sample images you see in this video are edited JPEG straight from the camera. No raw support just yet. <laughs> so if you want to see the full review and comparison to the current OM1 and the G9 Mark II, remember to subscribe and stay tuned later. OM System gave us one of the best MFT flagship cameras just two years ago and it still stands proudly against newer cameras came out last year. The OM1 is still through and through a photography-centric camera aiming for photographers who need speed and accuracy without compromises in agility and ruggedness. And I'm not just saying this, but it was reported by numerous publications that the OM1 was a seller success for the company. Many birds and wildlife photographers were convinced by the abilities of the OM1 and either switched or added the camera for their needs. And two years on, the OM1, while still a great camera, is judged by many, many high-end professional and serious wildlife photographers. OM System decided to give the camera some hardware upgrades to keep up with the demand by these photographers and aims to directly address some of the shortcomings reported by them. As a professional documentary and portrait photographer, and now apparently a YouTuber myself, there is something for me too, which I'll come to that later in this video. So without further ado, let's dive in. First thing I noticed when I opened the box was the name on the OM1 Mark II. Well, the Olympus naming convention has finally coming to an end. The Olympus logo on top of the prism housing is finally replaced with OM system logo. Well, I'm very happy for the new company for making the transition as smooth as possible, but also feeling just a little bit nostalgia and sad to see the Olympus name finally disappear for good. Physically, there's no difference to the original OM1. Only the name has changed on top of the camera and the OM system logo on the bottom left of the camera has changed to a simple Roman numeral 2. The button layout, the dials and the labelings are exactly the same. Olympus has known for keeping the same design for a few generations before a total overhaul. For example, the EM5 has almost retained the same layout since Mark II. And the EM1 Mark II and III were basically identical, despite being four years apart. And I guess, when something works, why change it? So in short, if you love the EM1 slash OM1 design and the ergonomics, you will love the OM1 Mark II. Things such as the beautiful grips that everyone loves, the rocket sealed IPX53 body is basically as tough as ever. And it is quite beautiful for a flagship if you ask me. <laughs> and don't forget that it is still the smallest and lightest pro grade level MFT camera around. One of the technical criticisms on the original OM1 was its buffer size. It never really bothered me as a portrait guy, but a few bird photographers who rely on fast burst rates to capture the shots reported that the buffer in the original camera was just a little bit too small, and it gets filled up just a little bit too quickly, even when using the fastest memory card. 
A quick test reveals that the Owen 1 Mark II has doubled the buffer size as the original Mark 1. And this is significant for those who need more for that perfect moment. And I also ran a test against Panasonic's G9 Mark II, which has a crazy buffer. And it turned out to be about the same. However, there's a huge difference between the Owen 1 Mark II and the G9 Mark II after the buffers are filled. When Panasonic's buffer is filled, you can't take any more shots. Not until you let go the shutter button, wait a few seconds for the buffer to free some space, and you can take a few shots again. But when the buffer hits the limit again, well, it just stops. So if you want to wait for the entire buffer to clear, it will take a whopping one minute. On the other hand, the OM-1, both Mark 1 and Mark 2, can continue to shoot even when the buffer is filled, at a much slower frame rate, about two to three frames a second. Yeah, I know, but at least you can continue. Similar to G9 Mark II, if you let go the shutter button and wait for a few seconds, you can shoot another few shots again, but much, much better. Because clearing the buffer on the OM-1 Mark II is significantly faster than the G9 Mark II. You can take around 100 shots up to about 10 seconds, and it takes only 31 seconds to clear the entire buffer. This confirms one thing that not many photographers are aware is that Olympus and now OM system has one of the fastest card rating speed in the industry. I first reported that in my long-term EM1 Mark II review a few years back, and this clearly shows that it is still the case. Even when counted the bigger file size from the G9 Mark II, it would only take around 40 or so seconds to clear the entire buffer, if OM1 has the same file size or the same sensor as the G9 Mark II, saving around 20 seconds. So, it is quite significant and can make or break in a certain environment. So when you are a pro or someone who needs to capture quick, it is clear which one works better in those environments. Having said that, this is a very specific use case and those who understand would definitely appreciate the subtle yet critical upgrade. With little doubt that all Olympus and OM system users would know just how insanely good the autofocus is with the OM-1. It is quick, and coupled with the 1.2 Pro lenses, you can focus down to minus 8 EV, which is pretty sick. All the usual AI subject recognition modes are present with the new OM-1 Mark II. But as a portrait guide, I am thrilled to finally see that OM system has embraced human recognition in the new camera. While OM-1 has enhanced face and eye detection, it doesn't recognize the subject if, let's say, uh, when he or she turned around or when someone blocking his or her face. The new human detection mode combines the enhanced face and eye detection and human body recognition, which makes portrait work a lot easier in dynamic situations. Because of the new implementations, you now have two additional options in the menu. First is wide area recognition that lets the computer decide what to track and focus. And this works extremely well with single subject in the frame, such as bursts in flight with clear background or simply the bride on the dance floor by herself. <laughs> And second is focus point priority recognition, which is very, very handy in situations where there are crowds surrounding your subjects. Imagine a bride and her guests. Well, you can, you can imagine that the system can be a little bit confusing when there are loads of people around. And another example is that you may want to keep the certain composition by placing your subject in a certain position of the frame and you take control in moving the camera yourself and follow the subject. And this is something that I really, truly appreciate and find it extremely useful. But overall, the new AF implementation is definitely more refined as a result. And now, portrait photographers and content creators have something useful with the brand new OM-1 Mark II. Olympus and OM system cameras are known for their computational features, and they are the pioneer in that regard. Live Bulb, Live Composite, and Live ND were all great and useful, and creative functions that help many photographers achieving their shots with minimal fuss or experience. And again, I'm very excited to show you OM System's brand new Live Grad ND. Yes, this is really, really an awesome addition to the already awesome array of computational features. And to me, this could actually be the one feature that makes you want to buy this camera. There are a couple of important things that I need to address in this video that justify what I just said. First, Live ND works only in manual exposure and shutter priority modes. Because for a realistic motion blur to be created, the computer needs to know what are moving in the frame. 
and this requires a shutter speed slow enough to point that we can start to see motion blur. Typically 1 50th a second or slower for walking speed or 1 100th or 200th for something like a waterfall. And this can pose a challenge in bright daylight environments. For creative reasons, if you want to shoot shallow depth of field with background motion blur, then you still need a physical ND filter to cut down the light to achieve desirable shutter speed. I do love live ND and I've used it for creative street portraits. But if I don't bring a filter, I often have to stop the lens down to f22 and extend the ISO to 50 to get a slower shutter speed for it to work. The new live grad ND, however, can work in any speed. I can use it in any exposure modes, including program and aperture priority. But of course, live grad ND isn't live ND that covers the entire frame. So unlike live ND, which is all about creating motion blur, live grad is designed to balance the exposure of the frame by bridging the brightest and the darkest portion of the frame. In other words, this is an easy way to achieve balanced exposure of a high contrast scene without having to do exposure bracketing and stack them in post, or creating HDR images, or messing around highlight and shadow recovering during editing. This is a simple solution that has been used by great landscape photographers for decades, with a physical grad and D filters, of course. This means O11 Mark II can now darken parts of your scenes digitally in camera. Yeah, brilliant, right? And there are three types and levels of Grad ND, just like a physical filters, so you can have a combine of nine solutions to suit your needs. You can choose a desirable minus one, two, or three EV, and between hard, medium, and soft. The position and angle of the Grad can be adjusted with the front and back dials of the cameras. And now I can capture a much better picture of the scene without blowing out the skies or vice versa with a single click. Really, once again, this is just bloody brilliant. Right, okay, don't let the live grad ND carry it away. <laughs> anyway, the O11 Mark II and all its older siblings are all photographic centric cameras. Video features aren't always an immediate recognizable strength to many tech savvy hybrid photographers and content creators. Having said that, this channel have been made almost entirely with Olympus cameras, all the way back to the E1 Mark II era. In short, it is more than sufficient to make great videos if you're not a dedicated filmmaker or wants to produce something specific such as super slow motion in 4K, for instance. The original OM1 made a big step for OM system by enhancing its video capability by finally including 60 and 50 frames for both DCI 4K and UHD, 10 bits and HLG support, together with some useful stuff such as Zebra and Redbox display while recording. Small things, but yeah, very useful nonetheless. While it is not a camera for serious video enthusiasts or professionals, it is more than sufficient for social media professionals, content creators, and vloggers. The new O11 Mark II is even better than the original O11, all because of the vastly improved AF performance that will benefit anyone who needs autofocus in videos, especially self-filming, just like what I'm doing right now. When it comes to stills AF, well, without a doubt, the old woman absolutely nails it, but it never quite hit them up with videos. OM system has worked very hard over the past two years to finally giving videographers the same level of confidence as photographers when it comes to autofocus tracking. As mentioned before, the new combined human recognition and enhanced face and eye detection now works brilliantly during video recordings, together with the option to force focus the tracking within a single or group AF points is vastly useful in situations when there are lots of distractions in the frame. Yet, having said that, there are occasions that the camera still struggle to focus in strong badly situations. But this is not exclusive to OM1 or Mark II or Mark I. It happens to all the cameras I've tested, including the brand new G9 Mark II, 
and the full frame ZF. So, I've mentioned all the notable upgrades in the OM1 Mark II. And luckily, all the other goodies that made the original OM1 popular remain. Such as ultra fast stacked BSI Live Mode sensor is just phenomenal. The brilliant 5.76 million dot OLED EVF is just crystal. And the rugged IP53 magnesium body that never fails me in the field. And that focus joystick? Well, personally, still think it's the best in the business. And yeah, the fastest ride speed that I mentioned earlier for all the UHS 2 spec SD cards. And that's important too. No camera is perfect for every photographer in the world. But OM system has directly addressed some of the criticisms on the original OM1 with the brand new Mark II. As a result, it becomes the most complete photocentric Michael Four Thirds cameras to date. So, is the OM1 Mark II better than OM1? Yes, of course. Will I upgrade? In short, yes, definitely. It benefits what I do in many ways. The new AI human recognition together with the enhanced face and eye detection is simply brilliant and works very well for my jobs. The ability to change AF priority is simply icing on the cake. And for my travel vlogs and videos, well, OM system still fits the bill perfectly, all thanks to the smaller and lighter overall package and long battery life. It means that I don't have to carry many batteries if I'm out shooting the whole day. But the big question is, should you upgrade to the OM1 Mark II? Well, if you're a diehard wildlife photographer, absolutely. Bigger buffer can make or miss the photos you want in that critical moment. And then new AF subject recognition and AF priority focus recognition is icing on the cake. If you think that the new live grad ND is as useful as I am, then it is also a point to consider. However, the OM1 is still a great camera that will last you for years to come, considering that it is now discounted street price. You still get the same image quality, color science, and practically everything minus the stuff that I just mentioned. And if you ask me, should you buy the OM1 or the Mark II, but if you need a big buffer for your photography or that live grad ND for your landscape or whatnot, and if you like to photograph portraits like I am, the OM1 Mark II is really a clear choice. Personally, unless you need all the new features I mentioned earlier, buy the OM1 while you still can. And also, if you're an Olympus fan, because it is the last camera you can buy that bears the name. It's a photographic piece that has historic value that you should really keep one on your shelf, even long after you retire in the future. And I'm certain that, yeah, I'll be keeping mine. So that's it folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and find it informative. And please remember that this is only a preview, not a full review. And that you will have to stay tuned later when I have raw support for all the raw photos I took. And please let me know in the comment section below about your views on the brand new OM1 Mark II and its new features. And you know what to do now, thumb if you like this video and sub if you want to stay in touch with everything OM system and of course, Michael for Thirst. Peace. <laughs>
And this is great news for a lot of photographers, especially uh, people who love to shoot animals. And even now, the portrait guys like me, I thought they completely forgot about my genre. <laughs> but now they have included human subject tech uh, recognitions that really benefit me as a portrait guy. So I love this. So thank you, OM System, for doing that. And also, yeah, also thank you, OM System, for sending me the camera in advance so I can actually test it out. And I've been using with the 150 to 600 millimeter lens um, that you will see in the other videos that I released at the same time as this uh, yeah it's really really fun to use the cameras and the combo and uh, it's just phenomenal but anyway I'm definitely getting one uh, the, the Mark II myself because uh, yeah it is a great camera and I think I'm going to take this to Japan uh, to do my shooting you know because it got everything that I need ergonomics more compact film factors you know originally I was thinking about going the uh, using the OM5 but I think now I'm going to use this for my Japan trip so this will be great. I'll be taking a lot of small primes and uh, maybe one kind of like a flexible zoom with me and uh, like the 12 to 100 f4 Pro. That will do well for all the videoing that I need to do. And uh, yeah, most of the primes, you know, just small 1.8 prime will be sufficient then for anything I do. So I'm trying to keep everything as small as possible, as always for all my travel and vlogs. But anyway, let me know in the comment section below what you really think about the old one Mark II and all the new features I mentioned because the live grid ND especially I think it's just really really cool I love it and uh, anyway I'll leave you to it and then uh, yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can see some other videos online and uh, other people other people talk about the old one Mark II if you want to know more about it stay tuned I'm gonna have a, a complete rundown on the old one Mark II and the Mark One side by side and uh, doing some uh, testing on continuous focusing and everything like that so you can see the improvement of this but now as I'm testing this it is brilliant anyway have a good day have a good day <laughs> I'm freezing cold at the moment I can't feel my fingers now I picked the worst I mean the coldest day not worst day but the coldest day in London for me, for, for the last I don't know they said 14 years I don't know it's minus something at the moment it's definitely very very cold my batteries keep dying and uh, so I just uh, uh, not the camera actually it's the, my Atmos and then uh, my, not my Atmos Atmos the, uh, the, the Atmos Ninja is uh, the battery I've got four battery now all of them is gone because it's too cold for it and uh, that's the problem with something that's not freeze proof you know ohm system minus 10 easy and uh, anyway <laughs> blabbering too much now i'll see you all later bye for now